Hi there, I'm Shami. Welcome to my little internet space. In today's video, I'm going to give you five key tips to take better pictures with natural light. These tips are based on my experience as a photographer myself and it's for everyone to use. Whether you are a photographer, a content creator, you have a business or any project that needs content for your social platforms, this info is going to be very useful for you. So let's get started. My first tip is to shoot either in the morning or in the afternoon. This is because the light is more even and gentle during those time frames and it's easier for you to get a cool shot from it. These time frames are gonna change according to the season of the year you're currently in. So if it's winter time, you're gonna have a shorter period of time, but during summertime, you're gonna compensate. But it's usually between 8 a.m and 11 a.m. and in the afternoon it's usually between 2 and 5 p.m. If possible, avoid shooting during noon. This is because the sun is right above us and the light is very harsh and it's gonna create weird shadows that we don't want on our face or the subject and it's not so beneficial. And if it happens that it's the only time from you can shoot, try to avoid direct sunlight and go to a place where it's fully on shadow or if it's cloudy, well, you're safe. Second tip is regarding subject placement, whether you're shooting a model, an object or yourself. If you want a picture without any shadows and an even light, you just have to face yourself or the object right directly facing the light source. It means that if you're shooting outside, you're gonna face directly the sun or if you're shooting indoors because winter, you're just gonna place yourself right in front of the window that you have nearby. This way you're gonna avoid any unwanted volumes or shadows and you're gonna have an even light through all the image. On the other hand, if you do want to create some sort of volume in the image, you just have to place yourself or the subject on a 45 degrees. This means that if you're outside, instead of directly facing the sun, you're gonna position yourself a little bit to the side so the sun can create this sort of volume and it's gonna add a little bit more of spice to the image and it's not gonna be so flat. Adding a little bit of volume is gonna add to the narrative of the image that you may want to achieve. And if you're indoors, instead of facing the window, what you're gonna do is just gonna sit to the side. So the light source is gonna still come in at a 45 degrees and to the side. So it's gonna hit here and when it comes to this side, it's gonna have a little bit more of volume on that area. This is really good for portraits and it's also really nice when you're shooting a product to appreciate a bit more the volume that it has and if it has some sort of texture to you, highlight it in a very gentle way. And in case you don't know me, probably not, I'm Shamila, you can call me Sham or Shami. I'm a fashion photographer and content creator and I made this channel to share my experience and my knowledge regarding all things content creation. So if this is something that you're interested, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. So the next tip that I'm gonna share with you, it may sound a little basic, but it's actually very important and people tend to forget. So I think it was worth mentioning it. And it is when you're taking pictures indoors, if you're using natural light, turn off all your other lights. If you're using natural light as your main source of lighting and you also have, for example, another lamp turned on or your main dining room lights turned on, what's gonna happen is that the white balance of the picture is gonna be contaminated by another color of light source. And first of all, it looks horrible. And second of all, it usually the living room or the kitchen lights or wherever you, you're taking the picture at, they're usually above your head. So what's gonna happen is that even if you have some wonderful natural light coming from the window, you also have to have this weird source of light here. There's gonna be, they're usually like crappy yellowish, greenish when, when you see it on pictures. And it's also gonna create those horrible shadows that we don't wanna have like this horrible dark circles because you're gonna have a light source right above you. And why? why, why, why would you want that? We don't want that. So as silly as it sounds, make sure that you're turning off all your lights around you and you're using only the beautiful natural light that is given to you through your beautiful windows. Tip 
number four for today is to bounce the light whenever possible. Anything that you can use to bounce the light up and create a little bit more of an even light for you is gonna be so beneficial and it's gonna help you with the volume and with the overall lighting of the scene. How do you bounce your light? It's quite easy actually. You just need to find any surface that can bounce the light back. Any bright surface such as a white wall or a white cardboard, which those are like the very, very basics. And then you can also use a mirror to bounce the light back and give a little bit more of like oh, in your face. And you also have these five in one reflectors, which are, it's the life savior of any content creator in the world and it's the cheapest thing to buy. <laughs> they sell it everywhere, they sell it on Amazon, they sell it on Wish, they sell it absolutely everywhere. They're super cheap. It's like a, a big circle of love that has five sides and you can use either the white side, the silver side or the golden side. I wouldn't use that, but it's there for you if you wanna try to bounce the light back to you and give any portrait or any image a good light scene and you will see the difference. It's, if you can invest in a small reflector, trust me, it's the least expensive thing you could ever have and it's gonna make such a big difference in any picture you may take. Once you have that, you're just gonna step up your game almost instantly. And if you can afford or if you can't buy at the moment for whatever reason, find the white cardboard, grab a mirror and you can start bouncing the light with it and you will still see the difference. And my last tip for today is for all of you who want to have that golden hour photo, video, whatever content you want to make during that time frame and you're a little bit lost on when is actually the right time to take the golden hour pictures or the magic hour pictures. It's actually quite easy and it's something that is gonna save you a little bit of headaches and it's gonna allow you to plan a little bit more in advance. It's just very easy, you just Google weather channel, whatever platform that could tell you what time the sun is setting that day. Make sure to be on their location one hour before that. That's the easiest way to know when are you actually gonna be able to achieve that golden hour look. You can go for two looks during the golden hour. You can go for the classic, all gold, glowy, magical, in your face sunlight. Or you can go for a backlit shot where you place your, the subject behind the sun and you're gonna have a little bit of an angel falling from the sky moment and you're gonna have some sort of like oh, aura behind you and that can also be a very interesting shot if you're going for it. But I'll say for starters, if you're not like riding the golden hour yet, I'll just say face the sun and enjoy having the best skin tone of the day in your face. Those were my tips for today. Thank you for staying with me till the end. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new today. And if this is content that you like, make sure to be subscribed, like, comment, ring the bell, follow me on social media, tell your dog, share to a friend, tell your nanny. Any support is highly, highly appreciated and will make me go further in the future. So thank you in advance and I hope to see you soon. Bye. YouTube video ever. Yay! I didn't cry. Woo! Woo!